You see, this is what freedom and independence looks like to me. It's bloody glorious. Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back, lovely people. Thank you for tuning in to another video and checking out what's going on with me. So, it's been a big week. I am shattered again. I'm always tired the one I read it, let's face it. But this week has been a particularly crashy week. There's been lots of stuff going on, like appointments and new pain. This random arm has been diagnosed as tennis elbow. We don't understand that considering this is not a body that plays tennis and I haven't gone anywhere near a racket for years. Apparently it's repetitive strain injury, but I don't do anything repetitively because I do something once and fall asleep. So I'm not quite sure how this has happened. But this is the thing with ME. It's like your body turns into a drama queen and it does one little thing and goes, oh, I need to lie down. So clearly I've done something. I've either knocked my arm or I've done something different and it's just done this. So now I'm wearing this to support it. It's helped a lot. Actually, just wearing this has helped. So I've got to refer myself to physio. Uh, Deary me. Also had an appointment for disability benefits this week and that's brought up a lot. And I'm going to make a video about that because I think a lot needs to be said about benefits that I've not really talked about and I really would like to and I haven't and I'm going to. So yes, but anyway, that's for another time. By the way, welcome anybody if you're new to my content. I am Finn and I waffle. <laughs> Lately I waffle more than ever. But um, yes, welcome. Lovely to have you here. So today I want to talk about independence. Dependence, independence, interdependence, all the dependence. Um, and I'm talking about this in reference to moving and how I've lost my independence over the last year, really, and how I'm now kind of gaining it back, but how I'm also really rethinking about dependence and independence again. Because, do you know what, it's not the first time I've had these thoughts around independence and dependence. Shall I start at the beginning? Okay, I'll try. Right, so, we've just moved, as you know. Well, we've moved now. What month are we in? What month is it? Is it it's August, isn't it? So we moved, is it August? It's the end of August. Here we go. So we moved here. We went to Glastonbury in June. We moved here sometime in June or July. At the end of this, I will put the date there. <laughs> so we've been here quite a while now. And my word, the difference, because we were living in a first floor flat before, and we now live in a house. So the whole reason we decided to move was that I was actually completely physically stuck <laughs> in the flat. When we first moved to Devon, I was struggling with my health. We thought it was my thyroid and that eventually they'd work out why the meds weren't stabilizing my thyroid and that it would all be fixed and it'd be fine. So we moved into this flat. I had another crash and this time didn't come out of it and just went downhill rapidly, losing my ability to walk and ended up just stuck in that flat. And it's been horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And I've really kind of not even allowed myself to really acknowledge how horrendous it was. I think because if I'd allowed to, allowed myself to, I'd have had a complete mental breakdown because I had to suddenly rely on my partner, Chris, to do everything. I became so completely dependent on him to do the shopping, the cooking, everything to go out to appointments. You know, I could only book doctor's appointments on these days off. My doctor's appointment was a three minute walk around the corner, but I had to wait until his days off because I couldn't even walk the steps around there. Because even if I did the steps around to the doctors slowly, I would be exhausted and then I'd crash for a week, maybe two weeks at a time. We got the mobility scooter, but with nowhere to store it, it was useless, it was in Chris's boot. So the only time I could use that scooter was on Chrissy's days off. 
And I think the only thing that really saved me in that flat was that the windows were ginormous. I mean, it was a gorgeous flat and the windows were so huge and that helped. But that's why we were looking to move so that we could move. I could have a little bit of outside space and I could have a little shed in the garden with my mobility, with a mobility scooter in the garden so I could access that and get out on my own, which is also going to be another video because I haven't been out on my own more than about five times in the last year and I'm terrified, <laughs> but that's a whole other video as well. So yes, moving here was all about regaining some independence. And now, what I want to say really clearly is that being dependent on somebody isn't always a bad thing. Now I'm learning a lot as being a newly disabled person about ableism and about internalised ableism. And this again has parallels to my coming out as trans journey and how I was learning all about the trans language and being a trans person and how I got things wrong in the beginning. And I'm having a similar journey with disabled language and all of the culture around disability and the way of thinking about disability and there's lots of things coming up that are really shocking me because I consider myself quite well versed. My mum was quite physically disabled. I've got a lot of experience in working with disabled people and yet I've discovered a lot of ableism inside myself that's internalised. You know, I had this around even getting the scooter in the first place. So I'm very aware that, you know, I don't want ever to come across that some people cannot help but be dependent because that's just the situation that they're in. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. But I think for me, the reason it's kind of such a bad thing for me is it triggers so much from the past. I have a history of being really codependent that I took a long time to work through. And I've been, I was single for a long time before I met Chris and did a lot of work on myself. And in the very beginning when me and Chris got together, I had mental health challenges, but I very much looked after myself in those. And we had difficulty in the beginning with me almost being too dependent and Chris not realizing when I was struggling because I'm very good at looking like I'm completely fine. I can get up on a stage and give a talk and just look completely fine. And inside, all sorts of stuff's going on. I've got generalised anxiety disorder and a lot of people do not realise this because I've learned how to mask over the years and because I've learned skills at not going into full panic attack and to be able to manage it and still live. So Chris and me would have arguments in the beginning because I get to a point where like I don't deal with change very well, which I know is ironic considering that I've gone through gender transition and I'm been in recovery from alcoholism for 12 years. But the sort of change that someone goes, oh, we were going out, but now we're not. That can cause me to have a complete and utter panic moment. It just throws me off. And so me and Chris would have little arguments like that in the very beginning. And we then had to start talking and he'd say to me, look, you need to tell me what's going on because to me, you just look completely okay and fine unless you tell me. So I gradually learned the difference between codependence and asking for help and letting people in to what your struggles are so they can support you. So I've got much better at that side of things. But still, when I'm, I need a lot of help and people are having to do things for me that I cannot do my, myself, it triggers a lot in me. And I find it very, very hard <laughs> to not be triggered and think, oh, this is a bad thing. I must do it all myself. It's, it's really difficult for me. But I was talking to somebody yesterday. I've talked to a couple of other people about this. And I think what was really difficult about the situation in the flat wasn't so much that I didn't want to accept the help. It was because I didn't need some of the help because it wasn't actually my condition that was disabling me it was the environment if that makes sense so it was you know I could quite happily have got out on my own if I hadn't been in the flat does that make sense so that was why it was more frustrating I mean I'm under no false pretenses that all of a sudden just because I'm in this house I can suddenly start going here there and everywhere 
you know, because I'm not suddenly better. Energy is still a problem, uh, you know, regardless. But I think it's the whole idea around, um, what do they call it? Oh, it's, uh, the social model of disability, that we're not really, it's, it's the environment that disables you. If there were ramps everywhere, people would be less disabled because we'd be able to access places. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's why the situation in the flat was so terrible because there was actually so much more I could do for myself had I been a, in a different environment. And that's become so much more apparent since we've moved here because I've not been out on Molly on my own. Molly is my scooter, if you're new by the way here. Molly is my mobility scooter, named by Chris. Um, and so yeah, it's become apparent since moving here that I've not been out on my scooter once on my own. The back garden is a really huge um, independence thing because I can literally just take a step outside the back door and be in nature. Even if I step out on the back door and go to sleep in one of my chairs, you know, I'm in nature. But actually, it's the other little things that are giving me my independence back. And the first one I noticed was putting my rubbish out, my own rubbish. And I'm not kidding, I almost cried because... <laughs> I haven't put out my own rubbish for a year. <laughs> I went to the kitchen and I was like, oh, the bag's full. Oh, hang on. And I took the bag out of the bin, did it up, opened my front door. The bin's right next to the front door. Open the bin, put it in the bin, close the front door. And it's the simple things like that. And that's, that's when it twigged to me why the flat was so frustrating. It wasn't so much the bigger issue I, I'm, I hope this is making sense how long am i waffling on about this oh we're okay we're on 11 minutes i think this is what was really bugging me about the flat it wasn't really the the stuff around you know really needing chris's help it was the stuff that really had the, things been changed i could have still done for myself like rubbish you know it's silly things like that and it's just made such a difference we have got a much smaller home and now i can do so much more for myself because in the kitchen, I can put my perching stool down and then from that perching stool, I can reach the kettle, I can reach the fridge, I can reach the sink and I don't have to struggle. It's the same with the lounge. Now, the only problem we've got is the stairs. <laughs> that is an issue. I'm going to be really honest here. When we go camping, I have a fabric bottle that I pee in. So now use your imagination. So, you know, you can work around these things, but... This new home has given me independence that I didn't even realise that I'd lost. Like being able to put my own rubbish out, you know. It's just been wonderful. I mean, this is what I was talking about when I said how difficult this move was going to be. I knew it was going to cause me to crash. But I knew that long term, it was going to give me so much more because I just... To get on with my life now... I might recover from chronic fatigue syndrome. Best case scenario, I, I recover from MECFS, you know? Second case scenario, it improves, you know? I don't want to say worst case scenario because I don't think like that anymore. But those are the three options. I either completely recover, get a little bit better, or it stays like this, or gets worse. I've lost what I was going to say. I was doing so well and I threw myself off. What was it I was going to say? It was really, really, it was deep. It was deep. <laughs> that was it. So it, it could do anything, you know, get better, say the same, get worse. But I've done really, really well over the last kind of six months of adapting to this and really learning to live around it and accept it. But I think I'd hit a wall of accepting and living with it in that flat because the trapness that's not a word of that flat was a reminder every day of my disability of what i couldn't do and it almost like stopped any more healing if that makes sense whereas moving here i've got so much more room for healing now because i can go about my life now that we've got the, the right home and it's a much better environment for me to live in and I've got some outside space that's going to be so much healthier for my mental health as well and I can access my scooter and go out on my own I can start just living my life again now 
And that's got to be better for my mental and physical health anyway. And I think now this is going to help me to move into another extra stage of healing, both mentally and physically. And I'm really looking forward to that because I don't think I could have moved any further in that flat. It, it was bizarre how it was stopping both my physical and mental healing because I couldn't even take a few steps. I mean, whereas in the garden, you know, I'm pottering around a little bit, doing a little bit of gardening. I'm managing to do a few little things. So it's 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 just been the best decision we've made. And we really did kind of really um and ah about, you know, is this going to be something that's that's a good thing? Is it is it, you know, is it sensible? Is it not? And of course it was. It was such a good move. So, yeah, I've got lots to say on the whole getting out and about with Molly and the anxiety and that but I'm gonna do a whole other video on that because we're at oh we're all right we're all right I haven't gone on too long this week so yes that's this week's thoughts independence dependence that it's all right to be dependent on someone of course it is but I think having finding ways to have our own independence however small is also really, really important for our self-esteem. And I think that helps because it makes it easier then to to be dependent, you know, because I do struggle. I mean, Chris is getting muscles. We were in the shop the other day and I was holding onto his arm and went, wow, and it's a standing joke. Chris doesn't really grow muscles. He really doesn't bless him. I've always been the muscles in the relationship. I've always been the one that carries all the shopping, always, always do that sort of thing. Now it's him. I can't. I can't lift anything. I'll be asleep. You know, we go anywhere. He's putting the, the main tent up. He's doing all that stuff. So, you know, it, and it is bizarre that I rely so much on him now. So any little tiny bit of independence I can get, as much as it might be funny that I put the rubbish out, you know, that little tiny bit of my own little bit of independence it's so vital I think to feel good about ourselves and it just helps I hope this makes sense and I do really want to say that I'm so young in understanding the world of disability so if I ever do say anything wrong or the way I put things please do correct me because as I say I am learning every day about ableism and there's lots of things that you know, it really shocks me when I've learned about my own thoughts and feelings that, that how much ableism is involved. So please do feel free to leave a message and educate me in the same way that, you know, we all need to educate each other on different communities and different understandings of language and so forth. So that's what we're here for each other, isn't it? To learn about each other's lives. So, yes, let me know your thoughts on that. Um, what are you all up to this weekend? We have Trans Pride Plymouth, which I've only just found out about a few days ago. I'm quite excited about that. It's a march. We've got a march up at the Hoe and then a little event in one of our venues, which I forgot the name of, Gasworks, something like that. So me and Chris are going because we missed... Uh, excuse me, my brain's going in. We missed Plymouth Pride because it was too hot and Fred was having a pissy fit. So this would be nice to go to that. And then I think I'm going to spend all of Sunday in bed. But I hope you're all okay. I just want to say a massive thank you again. I know I keep saying this, but I'm I am so grateful that all of you are loving these new non-ended non ed non -ed, no no yep exactly these non-edited videos where I'm just leaving in. The beads of sweat, the slurring, the stuttering, the disjointed sentences, the forgetfulness and all of this. And it's lots of like old time Finn fan members that have commented and said that this is just like the early days. And it is, isn't it? This is just like the old Finn in the very beginning that started off on YouTube, just pressing record and going, Hi, my name's Finn and I've just come out as trans. And uh, I just used to press record once a week and tell you how it was. And it does feel very much like that. And it's so nice to just let go of all of the kind of worrying about the keywords and search engine optimization. I can't even say it anymore. And just get back to just making content. It's lovely. And there's so many new faces as well, which is really, really nice to see. We've had one new member join this week, member of Friends of Finn. 
welcome Jet. I'm seeing your messages everywhere. And it's really lovely. And so many other new faces, which is really, really lovely to see. So if you are new, welcome. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because it really does help. And you'll also get notified as well when I upload any finstalments. I haven't said that for ages, have I? Right. Have a lovely weekend. Feel free to tell me what you're up to in the comments below. Leave me a message. Oh, and thank you all for your questions that I asked you for as well. I have made a note. There were some great ones. There are ones I'm going to make whole videos about because they're that good. Right. Ow. Love you loads. Have a fabulous weekend and I will see you at some point next week. Bye.